distribution. Uh, there is a, no, I'm sure you know the adage, which is, uh, you know, there will be no transition without transmission, but DSOs are very much at the heart, you know, both of our decarbonization journey, uh, as well as our energy independence goals. Um, you know, we're moving to a, a much more decentralized system, right? Um, you know, following Fit for 55 and several other, you know, legislations. We're already seeing deep electrification, electrification of end user consumption. And it's, it's tangibly at the, the, the medium voltage and the low voltage level where we're going to, you know, plug our EV in, you know, connect our solar panel, you know, heat our home through a heat pump. You know, it's at that distribution level that that's going to happen. So that's where all the, you know, the millions of connections are going to, are going to take place. Uh, and therefore, you know, that's where I think the biggest challenge presents itself. So being a DSO person, I can't necessarily disagree. Uh, but, but I believe that the, the challenge is really twofold or at both levels to a certain extent. Uh, in terms, you, you mentioned the increase in demand. And of course, that demand will have to be channeled through TSO grids but in the end end up, like you said, in the EVs, in, in a low voltage grid. Uh, also with regards to the increase in, in DR that we need for energy security, but also for greening the electricity already now, some 70%, I believe, are connected to the distribution grid and will continue to be connected to. And we should mention that we are looking at both sides of the problem, the DER increase, as well as the demand increase in a study that we do together, which will be called Grids for Speed, because we believe that, that that is actually of the essence, namely speed, in bringing the grid to the state where it can cope with these challenges. I'm afraid, I believe so, yes, there is that risk. And we need to find ways to cope with that risk as well. Uh, and, and there are, of course, a couple of buzzwords, I would call them, that are flying around. Uh, one is de-risking, of course. One is the question of whether the remuneration for the capital that is actually needs to be invested, and we're talking about several billion of euros, several hundred billion of euros, actually. We also have, I believe, an issue in regulation per se. Regulation is, is more looking to the past than to the future. Uh, and in, in this sense, it's also, I believe, very timely and useful that the Commission now talks about anticipatory investments and we are going to introduce them into the regulatory framework. But yes, there is clearly the risk that in the end people will have to wait for their connections for the capacity that they need. I, I want to touch on that comment you made about anticipatory investments because I think it's spot on, Oliver. So I agree there is absolutely a risk that the grids become uh, the bottleneck. Already today, you know, we see, you know, some queues stretching out years with thousands of connections being, th thousands of connection requests being added every month. And it's a question of pace, right? So if you look at the past, you know, we've seen an accelerated pace towards decarbonization in Europe. You know, we've done amazing things to integrate renewables, and that's been an acceleration of that. But if we look at what's been invested in grids, roughly it's kept the same pace. And that's what needs to change. The investment in grids needs to keep pace, right? If we look to the future, it's going to go even faster. You mentioned three quarters, you know, of all grid connections, all renewable connections are going to come at a, at, at a distribution level. So that's one. Um, we're expecting demand, right, to increase 60% by 2030, driven by electrification of heat, driven by electrification of transport, you know, 65 million uh, potential EVs by 2030, 60 million heat pumps. By the, so, so all of that's happening at distribution level and we absolutely need to keep pace. So we need to shift um, a policy to allow for strategic investments into the grid ahead of the request. So that's absolutely needs to happen. And we also need to be to acknowledge that we need to invest in, you know, quite a lot in the grid. So we've got 80 million kilometers of, of network worldwide probably need to invest or refurbish the same amount of grid globally. And we need to invest in distribution capabilities, you know, digital, flexibility, the workforce. All of those things need to happen um, over the next decade to keep pace with the energy transition. I'd have to pick congestion, but really that's also an issue. Um, already, right, uh, we're seeing congestion emerge on the grids, okay. right? Uh, and the way to address congestion is by investing in the grid, fundamentally investing in the grid. 
not only of course in terms of you know hardening the grid so in terms of you know building new lines replacing outdated equipment etc um, but also uh, in terms of unlocking the flexibility within the grid so the flexibility of those uh, you know the generation those demand resources those flexible resources that can help ease congestion and allow us to eke out every little bit of capacity from the grid is so important to be able to keep connecting and keep that pace. We also need the digital technologies at the same time. So we also need to invest in digital technologies to be able to provide visibility and awareness and, and be able to have control over those, those assets and those resources. So for me, yes, congestion is the primary issue we need to be addressing. Um, public awareness, of course, we also need to we, we also need to we need to get into the mind of the of, of of the consumer. People need to understand the importance of of the grid to the energy transition. As Paul has picked out the other two, let me talk a bit about permitting, maybe because that's also a challenge, I believe. Because you said tweaking out, I believe I would call it almost swept the asset. That was yeah. we what we need to do in the distribution grid. We need to digitize it, like you mentioned. But sooner or later, we will have to upgrade it as well and also enlarge it, actually add capacity, real capacity. And if that happens in, in a high voltage grid, so in, in our case in Germany in 110 kV, that means that you probably have to have public permitting. And we're again very thankful with the Commission uh, for introducing these, these uh, emergency mechanisms that also allowed us to at least have an emergency permitting procedure for the connection itself. But most often it's not only the connection that we need to do, but it is really upstream capacity that needs to be added and you all know the numbers if you have to build a new 110 kV line it takes up to seven years even longer sometimes that's just too long in order to be paceful uh, so so permitting is also something that we have to think about of course we need to reconcile the environmental aspects of that with the need to build the grid but somehow we need to find a way to be a bit faster in order to keep pace like we said Thank mm -hmm. you.